Okay, so now we get to the exciting part of um, aromaticity. We get to the reactions, right? This gives us power. So in general, benzylic positions can be fully oxidized. All right? This is bizarre. Look at this. Um, this is bizarre. We have chromic acid, right? This is one way of making chromic acid right chromic acid and you, chromic acid we used before to take an alcohol right to a carboxylic acid or rather an alcohol to a, it was a secondary it went to a ketone and if it was primary it went to a carboxylic acid so uh, let me just put this here and pretend like that's an H right so we did that before in the beginning of chapter 13 but remarkably, we can do this now just at this carbon. Why? Well, it's uh, it's because that carbon is particularly re it's that that carbon is particularly reactive because it's in the benzylic position. Oops, 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 oops! I didn't start on the first slide. Sorry. Here's the first slide. <laughs> okay, so a carbon that is attached to a benzene ring is benzylic. Okay, so now we get to the exciting part of uh, aromaticity, and that is we get to look at the, the reactions that happen, all right? So a carbon that is attached to a benzene ring is called benzylic. That term benzylic just means you've got a benzene ring here, and the next carbon over is benzylic. These two are both benzylic carbons, all right? Now recall that aromatic rings in alkyl groups are not easily oxidized, so if you take chromic acid which can be made by putting those guys together. If you take chromic acid and treat benzene with it, you get nothing. Or if you take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heptane and treat it with chromic acid, you get nothing. Okay, but if you take a benzylic carbon and treat it with chromic acid, you get benzoic acid. Wow. Now look what happened here. There's a couple things I did. You introduced functionality to this, right? You had no functionality here. This was just a CH2. That was just a CH2. And now it's a, carboxyl, a carboxylic acid, right? Do you remember this reaction from chapter 13? We took primary alcohols and made carboxylic acids, but that's when we already had an alcohol on it. All right. Now, in order for this reaction to work, the benzylic position needs to have at least one proton. So this one does not have any hydrogens on it, right? It's CH3, CH3, CH3. There's no hydrogens on here, so we get no reaction. It's still benzylic. Right, because it's right next to benzene, but there's no reaction. All right, so look at this. Pot permanganate, potassium permanganate can also be used. So if we take potassium permanganate and treat some alkyl benzene with this, or treat, treat an alkyl benzene with this, then we get our carboxylate, which can be protonated to make a carboxylic acid. All right, so now go to uh, conceptual checkpoint 18.19, which is on page 855, and do that. All right, so benzylic positions have similar reactivity to allylic positions. Why? Well, they're kind of are all allylic, right? You've got these, long, these, got these electrons here that are ready to, to come over here and help out. Resin with the resonance, right? So in these benzylic positions have similar reactivity to allylic positions. And so you learned before that N bromosuccinamide in heat could brominate an allylic uh, carbon. There's and so we're gonna say that we'll do the same thing with a benzylic. Okay. 
Do you see that there's a there's at least one hydrogen here? All right. Now, once the benzylic position is substituted, we can do all kinds of things with that, right? So suppose that we take um, we take isopropyl benzene and we brominate it, right? With n bromosuccinamide, NBS, a little bit of an ugly isopropyl benzene, but we bromate it with uh, NBS and heat. NBS and heat, uh, we can we can make this an alcohol, right? Via SN1. Tertiary. Do you see a tertiary carbon there? Okay. Now, do you see a primary carbon here? Do you, wow, that's a horrible arrow. You see a primary carbon, that's a horrible arrow, just a minute here. I can do this. A primary carbon here, well, that's gonna give you SN2, right? So you've seen these reactions before. These are from chapter seven. Uh, this, um, this is done in base, right? This is done in, a, this is done not in, not in acid, but not base, right? Gives you acidic conditions. You've seen these reactions before. So this is just a review of why this is powerful. Okay, now once the benzylic position is substituted with a bromine atom, we can do all kinds of things with it. We can also eliminate. I think we just said that, right? We can do all kinds of things with it. We can substitute SN1. We can substitute SN2. We can eliminate with sodium ethoxide right right that's what that is we can eliminate with a bulky base or we can of course that's the only thing it wouldn't even take a bulky base to eliminate here right because there's there's only these the only uh, beta hydrogens are here and here those are the only beta hydrogens right so you don't even, it doesn't even require bulky base. You use bulky bases before for E2. Oh, actually, yeah. You might, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. So um, over here, you can eliminate with concentrated sulfuric acid. Remember that? That was the only one. These were all basic. Eliminations were all basic, except when you have an alcohol, you can eliminate with sulfuric acid. Draw the mechanism out for that. That'd be great review. Draw mechanism actually be good review to draw the mechanism for all of these okay that's that's all that uh, it, it's all that we have to consider for section 18.6 think there might be one more practice problem that you ought to go back and do so yeah go do skill builder 18.4 skill builder 18.4 all right good luck